To be an effective negotiator, you have to focus more on the other party than on yourself. So happy that you're here. Today I want to talk all about the subject of negotiations. I think you're going to get a lot out of this video. This is a video that's for somebody who doesn't have a clear structure in place for how to go about conducting negotiations when you're working with a new prospect. This is for somebody who's looking for fresh strategies to be more successful in negotiations. If you want to figure out what some of the top mistakes are in negotiations and avoid them, this is for you. If you have trouble dealing with objections, this is for you. And if you really just want to learn how you can be more successful overall with negotiations, this is for you. This is not for you if you're looking for underhanded, get rich quick type tactics to persuade somebody to buy from you. This is not that type of video. So let's get started. There is an important subject at hand, the topic of negotiations. You are not in business unless you sell something. And in order to sell something, you need to negotiate what it is that you are selling for what it is the market is willing to pay for. And quite often, if there isn't any pushback, it quite frankly means that you're not charging enough. So consider charging a little bit more and being willing to negotiate and find out where is the market threshold for what it is that you sell and the value that you're able to deliver. So there are a few basics that I want you to keep in mind. Basic number one is you have to be prepared. What does being prepared really mean? It means knowing as much about the person you're negotiating with and their company as possible. Understand what their major goals are. Where are they headed? What have they strategically tried to accomplish and failed or tried to accomplish and were successful at? What is it that they're passionate about? What are their goals? What keeps them up at night? What is the key emotional needle movers that you need to be aware of from their position. The more you know, the better. The more you understand their relative strengths and weaknesses to the outcomes that they are shooting for, the better position you will be to fill in the gap that they are missing. If it's possible for you to speak to some of the different users, influencers, and decision makers in the organization to gather multiple points of view so that you can reference that in your negotiation to make your statements more compelling to showcase a better ROI, the better. So the first rule here is you need to make sure that you understand your customer and also make sure that you're negotiating with the right party. If they don't have the ability to make a binding decision whether to move forward with you or not, you may have wasted your time. So that's step number one. Step number two is you have to walk into the negotiation with a strategy. What are the parts of the offer that are non-negotiable from your perspective? What are the parts of the offer that are negotiable? What are some of the added value bonuses that you can add to sweeten the deal? How can you uh, logically communicate and justify why you offer savings? If you don't justify why you offer a savings when you discount, then they'll, you'll, their customer will never take your list price seriously. So understand how you can justify savings, understand how you can sweeten the deal through bonusing and incentivizing them to take action. These are some of the key things that you want to have at your fingertips. You also want to figure out what your opening bid is and what your floor price is. So let's talk a little bit about this. So step number one in your mind is you really have to understand what is the value you offer relative to the problem that you're trying to solve. And understand that from your competitor's perspective as well. We need to make sure that we're in the right ballpark in terms of articulating the price point, the retail price point relative to the problem they have and relative to what the market is already functioning at. So that's step number one. Step number two is we need to make sure that we have the appropriate opening bid. So the opening bid is what it is that you are gonna to come to market with into the conversation with showing that you are really interested in moving forward. So you're not gonna open with per se your complete retail price unless you feel that that's a standard by which it's fair and acceptable to open in your marketplace. So you're gonna have an opening bid that's saying, look, I really wanna work with you. This is what I've done. These are, this is the package I've put together. This is my opening bid. So now in your mind, you need to know what your floor is. What is it that you will not cross 
if they continue to negotiate and negotiate and negotiate? What is it that you will not cross? Now identify what are the tools that you can use to sweeten the deal. So these are the bonuses that you can offer. How you can justify savings when you do give a discount. Make sure that there's a logical reason behind it. These are some of the basic aspects of your framework that you need to consider. Now, as you go through the negotiation process, what you're going to be looking for is a couple things. One, when to strategically add a bonus and to bonus stack as you go through a process. And two, understand what are the small things that you can give away to show flexibility and understanding and respect for the person that you're working with. Very, very important. You want to make sure you know what you're going to focus on, which is non-negotiable, what is it that you are willing to negotiate, and how much of it you're willing to negotiate. And I recommend that you have uh, some easy things to give in on that don't are not part, excuse me, of the primary offer that you have. So those are a couple key things. Mm -hmm.